Can we just declare this April the JoJo Siwa month? Because boy, oh boy, hasn't she run the internet? We've literally slept, eaten, drunk, talked, and dreamt about JoJo. And one thing about JoJo, if she wants you to focus on her, like it or not, mm. you will. The downside of her being constantly hitting the headlines is that it never takes too long before the backlash starts pouring in. And that's exactly what happened. And so on today's episode of Keeping Up with JoJo Siwa, it looks like amidst her rebranding and all the clout around her music, nothing has hit harder than the latest allegations that she shamelessly stole another artist's song and ran with it as her own. Two songs, actually. Karma that she released earlier this month and another one that she has yet to release but has teased on a few occasions. Like, she stole everything, commas and full stops included. It all started on the eve of the video release of her song, Karma, where JoJo made rounds to several places to celebrate and officiate its premiere. Jojo then proceeded to have a party with her friends and family, soaking in her new achievement. However, the drama started when in one of the bars she went into in West Hollywood, Jojo said this. This song, I want you to listen for a very special ad lib. Because it is about one of my exes. The ad lib goes something like, some of my exes have fame. So it went viral and immediately people picked that it sounded nothing like JoJo. People were like, we've heard this somewhere and on this about internet sleuths, when they decided to get to work, they will find answers. And they did. The real artist was called Emmeline and she actually did this song in 2022. However, before people could go so far dragging JoJo, Emmeline moved in swiftly to explain the confusion. She said, hi, 2024 fans, I'm going to make a story time soon. I actually didn't sign off on it. Coming out with JoJo, not her fault. If my version gets more love, I can still put it out after hers. Thanks for the support. Even though Emmeline cleared JoJo's name, people were still not having it because as much as JoJo said that was the only part dedicated to her ex, literally the whole song is. So there's that. That was the tiny bit of backlash she got concerning her lyrics, but nothing could have prepared JoJo for what was coming next. The next part of JoJo's wild web of controversies shines a spotlight on her song, Karma. Her headlining song, the one that has been causing all this online buzz. Y'all know the drill, guys. Once people realize that one thing isn't adding up, they'll scrutinize the entire thing. That's exactly what they did with JoJo, and yep, even the song wasn't her original idea. So the thing is, JoJo has been talking as if she did it all when she came to this song, even mentioning that Karma has been in the works for two whole years. Two years ago is when I started writing new music. Okay. I got out of my Nickelodeon music contract. I signed a deal with Columbia Records. Mm -hmm label has been amazing. She clearly says two years ago when I started writing new music. And again, it came out that Jojo Siwa didn't write that song. Not just that, she never even owned it in the first place. Even the song description is clear that this song wasn't Jojo's original idea. It reads, Karma is a Bee is a song recorded by Brit Smith in 2012. It was gonna be released as a single and it was teased many times, but eventually ended up getting scrapped. The song was also originally recorded by Miley Cyrus in 2011. 12 years later, the song was released by Jojo Siwa. And if you check a little further down, you'll see the producer and the real writers acknowledge. Even Apple Music, Spotify, and other streaming platforms clearly show that Jojo Siwa doesn't own the writing rights to the song. And so with such proof, people started calling out Jojo Siwa for making it look like she did it all, when in real sense, she only owns the song because her money bought it. The song is not even two years old, as she had put it. It's 12, if not more. The main thing that does doesn't sit well with people in this case is just why Jojo won't admit that she didn't write this song. Better yet, she doesn't even have to talk about it, but when she keeps insinuating that she did it all and that Karma is her brainchild from two years ago, I can see how this double standard can end up rubbing people the wrong way. Jojo may not have stolen the song, but she lied. Otherwise, things wouldn't have gotten so out of hand the way that they did over something that could have easily been avoided. Justice for the real Brit Smith, AKA Mattis. Her original version of Karma is a Bee is so much better than Jojo Siwa's. Brit's pop star career should have been huge because she has an amazing voice, look, and songs. Glad she is finally getting the recognition she deserves. After all these years, I was obsessed, still am, with some of her 2011 debut single, Better Than Her, and her Rihanna Melody. National version and Miley Cyrus's versions were scrapped, but this is enough proof that Jojo lied about having started working on the song two years ago. Other than Jojo publicly trying to control the narrative that she owned the song, there are several posts she did that also make it look 
looked like she worked on the song from scratch. Like this one where she posted what it looked like behind the scenes in the making of Karma. Uh, I know you don't like a click, but what if we try one with just the click in your voice? Oh, an acapella moment? No? Yes, I'm here. Let's try it. I love you. And whenever you say, you know, you know I'm here. Yeah. I love that. Oh my god, she's raspy today. However, even this video got her some backlash because JoJo wasn't as smart as she thought she was. If you look keenly, you'll notice that the graphics in JoJo's black t-shirt are scenes from her Karma music video. This is not really a big deal, but I'm just a little confused because I noticed her t-shirt is from the Karma music video, but this video shows her recording the song Karma. So like, are they just fully acting out as if like they're recording the song? I don't know, I just thought that was a little funny. But that's not all loves, there's more. This is Jojo Siwa we're talking about here. She can never just serve us one drama. So during her media tour, as she was releasing Karma, she also said something controversial again. Jojo said that she was looking forward to creating a new music genre called gay pop. And it piqued people's interest, like, what is she talking about? Because there is no way she doesn't know that gay pop already exists. I wanted to start a new genre of music. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, called gay pop. Songs like Applause by Lady Gaga. It's the On My Own Miley Cyrus. Can't be tamed Miley Cyrus. Karma. It's that that world of music. And as always, she got the backlash she was looking for. I think JoJo should have been born two centuries ago when people were inventing stuff. Maybe she would have had a shot at inventing something because it really itches at her that everything she wants to come up with has already been done. JoJo eventually clarified what she meant with this whole gay pop situation and once again trust that JoJo will always twist her words around to convince people. Do you want to go back on your statement and say that you're, you weren't the inventor of gay pop? I'm definitely not the inventor of gay pop for sure not but i do want to be a piece in making it bigger than it already is okay bring i want to bring more attention to it okay i'm not the creator but i'm i'm not the president but i might be like the ceo or the like cmo okay i'm gonna be the cmo the chief marketing officer i like Obviously, that marketing tactics whether people like it or not i think that's fair all right i'm a cmo the, of gay pop. <laughs> the bottom line is jojo is enjoying the fact that she has just been annoying people lately and whatever she does or says just kind of pisses everyone off people even started making fun of her especially on tiktok with most people attempting to redo her karma dance challenge just to mock her but one thing about jojo siwa she has thick skin thick speaking of jojo's dance challenge woo! y'all know it is outrageous. Literally, this was just all part of JoJo's move to get the public talking, and yet again, she succeeded. This TikTok was literally in a chokehold with this dance to the point that it had become a move. Even JoJo's friends joined in, but even this could not go down without drama. So, the drama began when some of JoJo's friends hopped into the challenge just for fun, and this did not sit well with JoJo because the truth is that people were mocking her, so she expected her friends to be on her side. James Charles and Tana Mojo were were the culprits. Somehow Jojo didn't expect her friends to be on the other side. But this is where it gets interesting. Jojo defended James saying that he actually did side chat her and ask her for permission before posting. She added that she was completely okay with it and that she actually found James's video super hilarious. Just keeping it real, the internet is coming it's brutal. at you. Yeah. Hard. No, they are. We got TikTokers. Who James Charles. James Charles is talking some James texted me yesterday. This like, yeah, he texted you? No, he texted After text he mocked you? So he texted me and he was like, do you care if I post this? Oh, okay. And he was like, do you care if I make a dance video to Karma? And I was like, please, I was like, go in, like, wow. poke fun, get, get the deal. Right. Well, here's the thing. Well, good for him for calling, I guess, yeah. and asking for permission. First of all, we all know JoJo has a track record of not only being friends with some super problematic people like James Charles, but she also defends them publicly, even when their actions are inexcusable. In fact, JoJo even invited James to her listening party, and y'all can already tell who else was there, right? Yep, Colleen Ballinger. Anyways, I digress. So Jojo defended James and they even ended up doing the Karma Dance Challenge together. However, things took a different turn when she was asked about Tana Mojo joining the challenge. Weirdly enough, Jojo wasn't having it. So Tana posted two different videos jamming to the song, one with her man, and in the second video, Tana was just singing along. Jojo said Tana's reaction didn't sit well with her and she even reached out to her concerning the two videos. I mean, Here's the thing about Tana. Tana, I've loved Tana since I was 13, 12. And where I'm confused with Tana is I have been not friends with her, but we have been 
close, like homies. I did her podcast and it was like, we were talking about having like a fun night. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so for her to go do all that, cause she, she was mocking, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I actually texted her. I just sent her her own video and I said, LOL. And yeah. she just went, ha 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 ha. But I was like. You just said, LOL? I think that's what I said. Let's, let me see. You didn't say what the f- be I think it's just Jojo being like, give me my, I, yeah. like I saw this. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. It's no, I hear locked. You. I, oh, I said, I said. But her being, ha, 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 I said, ha. first question, no. Second question, yes. Ha, ha, ha. She responded, ha, 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 Is it just me or is JoJo forcing some sort of beef with Tana? Because it literally doesn't make sense. So does it mean that she wouldn't have been bothered had Tana reached out to her first the way that James did? Like, what difference does it make? JoJo added that she was particularly hurt because she was getting so much hate online and she didn't appreciate when people close to her joined in her public humiliation you're putting your heart and your soul in this you're literally paying for oh, it doesn't it like it burns it hurts a little. it f- burns it burns yesterday nope not yesterday day before day before i was pretty upset about it and then yesterday i was fine all day and then this morning i was kind of a little again like in a wah wah headspace but i think that's just where i'm at physically right now i'm just like Keep it pushing. But it didn't stop there, y'all, because as you might have already guessed, Tana Mojo responded. Tana was honestly shocked at how much JoJo had blown the whole thing out of proportion when, in her knowledge, her and JoJo were cool. Tana then added that she only realized that things had gone south between them when Trisha Paytas brought it up. Actually, I went to her house and I sit down on her podcast and she's like, you know JoJo Siwa just like came for your neck. And I was like, what? Like she broke she it to me yeah. on just Trish. <laughs> Here's the thing, dude. There is no world, I said this to you, Uh where I'm asking anyone that is a viral meme that everyone is chiming in on that I'm gonna reach out and say, hey, is it okay if I make this TikTok? That type of just like, you know what I mean? Just weirds me out. Like if it's my close ass friend, and it's like, I know it's really affecting them or something, obviously. But even like well, Team Bryce on God, like you, like yeah. you're going to chime in and make a joke. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I have to be honest, James's video was more of a mockery to JoJo than Tiana's. And a lot of people feel like JoJo just blew things out of proportion. If JoJo was really a new bad girl, she shouldn't be pressed by Tiana's TikTok. The problem with JoJo's rebrand is that she's not committed to the bit. She wants people to believe that she's a bad girl, but she's not capable of dealing with the backlash that comes with being labeled as a bad girl in the media. The idea of Tana Mojo asking Jojo Siwa for permission to do anything is so funny to me. I agree with Tana. It was not that serious. Jojo acting like it was this huge moment of disrespect. Like, girl, please, girl, TF up. You don't need to ask permission to do something like that. People are actually clowning on Jojo. What Tana did wasn't even remotely on that level. I actually agree with Tana. This is ridiculous. What do you think, loves? Is Jojo Siwa trying to create an entire mountain out of an anthill or did Tana cross the line? Please let me know down below and please, is turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss all the latest tea on these celebrities and influencers.